Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number five in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to teach the robots who's going to be boss. What I'm going to need you to do today is pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice no sweeteners added, none needed. I will also need you to get out your gear. We are working on the most excellent Elegoo Smart Car version 3.0. What? You don't have your gear yet? Look in the description. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick a kit up, and that way we will let you play along at home, and we will be working on identical hardware. Hey, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. Your help and encouragement and support keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about skedaddling on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to be doing today. I do believe, if I am not mistaken, that last week in lesson number four, I left you guys with a homework assignment. And the homework assignment was just to make this drive forward, turn around, and come back. And I can't remember if our target distance was five foot or ten foot or whatever. But the question is, how many of you guys were able to write your first program for the robotics kit, get the thing to drive forward, turn around, and come back? If you tried and got it, or if you just really tried and couldn't quite get it, great. That's okay. That's good. All right. But what I'm going to talk to you about is, is that really kind of what I'm trying to teach here today is not just, and not just today, what I'm trying to teach in these series of lessons is not just how to get a job done, but how to start thinking like an engineer. Okay, and what do I mean by thinking like an engineer? Well, how many of you guys just went in and kind of by trial and error kept trying different times until it just, you got it where it went 10 feet, and then you tried different things until it would turn around 180 degrees, and then coming back, you should probably use just the same time that you use going forward. How many of you guys did that? By trial and error and how many of you guys did it thinking like an engineer well it's okay if you're not thinking like an engineer because if you were already thinking like an engineer you probably wouldn't need to be taking those these lessons my job is to teach you how to think and so I'm going to take that opportunity today as we look at this simple program now what does it mean thinking like an engineer well we're going to be working a lot with this smart car and so what you got to start thinking is do you want to spend the rest of this class doing everything by trial and error or do you want to start setting up modules that will allow us to program this thing in a lot easier way and kind of the key to doing that is number one not just write linear code where it's step after step after step but to build functions and those functions will do certain core things so number one we want to build programs that are function based not just one long list of code and the second thing is is that we want to calibrate it okay because I don't want to continue to guess how many seconds it's going to take to make the thing go five foot or seven foot or four foot forward. I want to tell it in the units that I care about, which is I'm going to be doing things in feet. Now, you guys that prefer the metric system, you can do it in metric, but don't hate me because I use feet. Okay, I get more hate because some of my lessons I do in feet, I get more hate over that than just about anything else. But you can do it in feet, you can do it in inches, you can do it in meters, you can do it in centimeters. But what I'm going to show you today would be the same for whatever, you know, whatever it was that you tried to do. Okay, so you can use whatever, you can use whatever units you want. I will be operating in feet. Okay, what I'm also going to need you guys to do is I think that we should probably go ahead and open up a fresh new Arduino IDE. And if you give me a second here, I do believe that I can do that. Let me hop on over here 
and here we go okay and let's go ahead and let's start with the code that we ended up with in uh, lesson number four because that uh, remember that kind of had these basic uh, these basic commands for uh, forward we want to go a one zero zero one on I and one I and two I and three I and four and these are the codes to kind of make it go in the right direction now how far it goes or how much it turns is going to kind of be what we figure out today but that first uh, that lesson number four had that and so if you did not save that program you can jump on over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and then search with this little search icon search on robotics training lesson number four and you will come here and this was this code that we had where we could do a right turn a left turn a forward or a backwards okay and so what I want you to do is go ahead and click on the two little page icons right mouse click and copy okay and then come back over here I'm gonna do a control a and I am going to do a control V okay and so the nice thing is you can kind of see that we've got a right turn a left turn a forward and a backward uh, uh, programmed in here now what you could have done was just commented some of this out and then just played with this let's say that you would go forward play with the delay time until you got 10 feet away and then do a right turn and t play with the delay time until it made a 180 degree turn and then use for the uh, forward again whatever you'd use the first time because you're still going forward it's just forward is rotated by 180 degrees now okay so let me get up here where you can see probably a better view that is a pretty good view there so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to remember that we've already set up most of our variables up here that these pins are what this is enable the left wheels enable the right wheels and then these are those control systems uh, control signals seven and eight for the left wheels and then nine and uh, eleven for the right wheels okay and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up functions okay because I don't want to just stack code like this I want to write functions functions and so I will just start down here and if you guys have not written functions before well you're gonna learn something really neat and really cool today and so what we do is we put our functions after our void loop okay and where does our void loop begin it begins here with void loop and then it ends after that last curly now it's very important to do this after the last curly okay it's very important to do it after the last curly and so what I, what functions do you think that we might want to do tell me some functions that we might want to do well we might want to go forward okay and so I'm going to create a new function and instead of a void loop it is going to be a void forward okay and just like the void loop you have an open and a close parenthesis and then you are going to have an open curly and then you are going to have a closed curly and then what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to go up and get that code that makes things go forward okay and so on that that would be this code here right it's what's after forward I'm gonna right mouse click I'm gonna go ahead and cut it so I'll get it out of the way and then I'm gonna come down here to void forward and I'm gonna put that code in there now if I want to go forward all I've got to do is I've just got to give the command up here if I want to go forward all I have to do is up here in the void loop okay all I would have to do is just say forward like that and then what is that going to do that is going to jump down here and do this code uh, this code is part of forward now the truth is we just don't want to tell it to go forward we are going to want to give it some sort of parameter okay because we're going to want it to go a specific amount and so I'm going to declare a variable here and I'm going to pass down to this function D which is distance so I'm going to say void forward and then it is going to get this variable D that's going to be passed to it and then what are you going to delay well 
we're going to have to do a calibration, but right now let's just say D times 1000 because right the delay is in milliseconds and so really the D that we're passing is not going to be a distance but it's going to be a time so let's just say run for one second okay so now if we came up here we can see that we would go forward and I uh, yeah we're going to go forward and then what we could do is we could do a delay uh, let's see. I don't want to run this yet. Let's just go ahead and put it all together and then we'll run it at the end because it's kind of hard to, you know, you got to be starting and stopping the motors. And so let me turn this off. Uh, sorry, it keeps, uh, keeps making that noise. Okay, so that, if we call forward, it's going to jump down here to forward. Now to make things go faster, and I put a closed curly in and there was already one there, and so this opens this opens the function and this closes it well let's do another one okay so let's do control c and then let's do a control v and i think that you probably would be better served if i turn this off and we looked at that little table i hope that you can see the little table yeah, we can see a lot that we need to see there. Okay, so now instead of void forward, this is going to be void uh, backward. And we're going to place, uh, send it the float D again. And I'll, sh I'll show you a little bit more about how that will work later. Let me just show you up here for forward. We would pass it a number like, uh, let's see, where were we here? If we passed it the number one, then one comes down into D, and then we would delay by D times a thousand, so that would be one second. All right, so that kind of that kind of makes sense. So now for for uh, for void backward, we need to get the backward code up here, and that was this, and we are going to cut the backward code, and we are going to come down here to backward, and we are going to paste it in there. And this is low, high, high, low, right? And then if we come over here for backwards on our chart from last time, it was low, high, high, low. And so that looks good. All right, if we can do forward and backwards, what else would we need to do? Well, we need to control V for putting a new function in. And I ended up with an extra semicolon there. I don't know why. I wonder if that was up there. No, that looks good. Okay, so, uh, we are now, I did not copy that right. Let's get, let me get rid of that. Okay. And I will copy the void backwards. And this time we are going to do a void turn right. And again, we'll pass it some parameter D. And then we will make this d times 1000 and a right turn if we look over here a right turn is 1010 so it would be high low high low high all caps high low high low all right and that is turn right high low high low all right and this one on backwards i should have said d times all right and let's check that again backward is low high high low backwards is low high high low so that looks good so we can go forward we can go backwards we can turn right now tell me what we would do next we would turn left that would be the other thing that we would want to do, would be to turn left. <clears throat> and if I look here, a left turn is low high, low high. Zero, one, zero, one. So turn left is low, high, Low. Every one of those was wrong. 
Couldn't have been more wrong. Hi. I cannot spell today. All right. Low, high, low, high. Low, high, low, high. Okay. What else would we maybe want to do? So we want to go forward. We want to go backwards. We want to turn left. We want to turn right. We need to stop. Okay. We need to be able to stop. And so here... I'm going to make a new one. Uh, I guess I can paste it again. Right mouse click and paste. And this one is going to be stop car. Right? And that one, a stop, you don't need to pass it a parameter. You don't need to pass it a parameter because we just want it to stop. And we're not going to need a delay in here because all we want to do is stop. And how would we stop? It would be low, 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 low. Okay, so we'll make this low 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 now you've got to think that if i go let's say that i go i go forward for one second and then i go back up to the main program control it's going to keep going so after i complete the command like if i want to go forward by two feet after i complete that command of going forward for two feet I want to what I want to stop so here after you get where you want you want to do a stop car and let me make sure that's what I called it stop car and so here we're going to do a stop car when we're done going forward otherwise it's going to keep dro uh, driving and same thing if I turn a certain amount after I turn the amount that I want I better stop or backwards or if I turn right, I better stop when I'm done, and then I stop. In that way, if I send it a command, go forward two feet, it will go forward two feet, and it will stop. If you don't stop it, it's going to keep going. All right, does that make sense? Okay, so now all of those are done. So I can go forward, backwards, I can turn right, and I can turn left. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to come up here and now inside of my void loop, I want to get rid of everything inside of my void loop. I'll keep that forward, but I come down here and I get rid of everything inside of my void loop. Make sure that you keep this uh, close curly that closes your void loop, but I'm going to go forward one and then I am going to delay by 1,000. Okay, and then I'm going to go backward by one. And this is really, we, we're not doing distance yet because we haven't calibrated. This will just be one second backwards and then delay 1,000. All right, so let's see if this is going to work. So what I need to do is I need to find my little USB Where is that thing? I hope I hope this one's alive. We'll see. I'm going to plug it in. Let me go back and let you guys see the little car again. I hope. All right. So I'm going to plug this in. Guys, I always make sure that this is turned off so that the thing doesn't drive off the table when I download the program. Okay, got the happy little noise. That's good. And now let's go ahead and let's download this. I hope we don't have any errors because all the copying and pasting we did, if we get an error, we probably copied it 20 times, but it looks pretty good. I do believe that works just as a reminder for it to work. You got to make sure that you are on the right COM port for your uh, Arduino. Make sure that you're set on uh, the board Arduino Genuino Uno. Okay, and so now that went down, so now we're going to turn it on. We expect it to spin for a second, stop for a second, reverse for a second. Okay, and so now I am going to turn this thing on. Boom! Do you see this? It's doing exactly what we told it to do. And what is the good news? We taught it like an engineer. Okay, we taught it like an engineer. We thought like an engineer. So now we have functions that we can call. Okay, we have functions that we can call. I turned it off. Guys, the other thing is, like, if I want to go forward, uh, you know, by a second and backwards by a second, 
I don't want to like keep going back and forth. So I want it to go through the void loop one time, which is kind of like the loop is supposed to loop, but I don't want it to loop, so I want to hang it. And the way I'm going to hang it is I'm just going to come here after it goes through one time. I'm going to say while 1 equal equal 1. When does 1 equal 1? 1 always equals 1. And then what do you want to do in this? You want to do absolutely nothing. I wonder if I can type pass. I'm not sure if it'll take pass or not, but let's just try that. No, it doesn't like that. I think that's Python that knows pass. But we'll just not put anything in there and do absolutely nothing. So now when it gets there, it's just going to hang. All right. Now, the other thing that I will tell you guys is, is that what you can do is when we turn this thing on, it's going to go one time. Okay. So we're going to turn it on. And why did it not go one time? Because it already went through the loop before we got here, and it's in that while. So what do you do? Do you see this little reset button here by the red light? Do you see that red light, and do you see that reset button? That reruns the program. Okay, it's going to go forward a second, stop, go backwards a second. Okay, so let's see. Why did that not do that? Ah, I didn't have it all the way on. So now let's reset. Okay, forward a second, stop a second, backwards. And it did it one time. Well, if you want it to go again, hit reset. Or if you really want it to just go back and forth, then take out that while one equal one. Okay, so it does it one time. Boom! That is really, really great. This is doing what we want. Okay, I think that I am going to go ahead and try to kind of test. I'm going to try to test the right turn and the left turn right here. I might regret that. I might regret that terribly. Okay, but let's do a right turn and let's do a left turn. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say right, or what did we call that function? Turn right and then turn left. So I'm going to say turn right and then I'm going to say turn left okay and I'm gonna take the cable out when I do this but I'm gonna go ahead and download it and then I'm gonna stop by having the while true okay so I'm going to make sure that this is off it was actually on so I'm glad I turned it off look like that work okay now I'm going to unplug this alright and now I'm going to turn it on okay I think alright when you turn it on it might reset the Arduino so it might actually run it this the first time let me see I'm gonna turn it off and then turn it on okay <laughs> What is, what is kind of neat? I, I was not expecting this, but one second looks like it is pretty much, uh, is it 360 degrees? Let's look. For one second, it goes 360 degrees. Okay, it looks like it goes about 360 degrees in one second. So that'll help us later on when we begin to calibrate. Okay, so what is, man, boom. We guys are smoking here. We're going to have this thing singing and dancing before too much long, longer. Okay, so now we have functions, we have modules built, so we can then program this thing by just calling modules, but those modules are not calibrated. We're just passing it a second and it runs for a second. But when you're doing the world of robotics, you don't think, I want my car to run for a second. You think that you want it to go like 10 feet. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to calibrate this. Okay, so I think that what I will do is I'm going to create new functions and it's going to be a forward calibrate. I'll just say cal f, cal b, cal r, and cal, cal l. So calibrate forward, backwards, left, and right. And then those things will allow me to figure out what, uh, what my calibration parameters are. All right, so I'm going to come up here and I am going to get this function and copy it just so I don't have to write everything. 
Okay, and then I will paste it. <clears throat> and then what I will call this is Cal F. Cal F. And I'm not going to pass any parameters to it. It's going to be Cal F. And then how would I do a forward? It would be high, low, low, high, high, low, low, high. All right. And what I'm going to just let it go is I'm going to let it go five seconds. Okay, so I'm going to say delay 5,000. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say stop car. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll let it go. Uh, we will let it go. I'm sorry, I got a little. I need to scoot this over. And let's see here. Give me just a second. I clicked the very wrong thing there. Okay, this is where we're working. Okay, so I will calibrate F. I will go high, low, low, high. That will go forward for 5,000, and then it will stop. Okay, now I also want to calibrate backward, and so I'm going to copy this one because my highs and lows should be the same, and I need to make sure to get the trailing squiggly so this I will come down and I'm gonna paste this and this one is going to be Cal B for Cal calibrate backwards Cal B and I'm gonna set those things up and then I'm going to go for five seconds and then I'm going to stop Okay, now I'll need to do a calibration for the right. So now let me just get my turn right, and then I'll create a calibration function for that. And I'm going to call this Cal R, C A L R. All right, and do you guys see what, do you see where I'm going with this? And this will be again for 5,000. And I don't need to pass it a parameter. And this one I don't need to ca ca uh, pass it a parameter. And the Cal F I don't need to pass a parameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how far does it go in five seconds. And then if I have a distance traveled in five seconds, Distance is rate times time. Rate, distance is rate times time. Rate is distance divided by time. I'm going to measure how far it goes, divide by the time, the five seconds. And now i got a rate. And now I can calibrate my other functions by putting that rate back in it. So we'll only run these calibrations one time. Okay, so I have a Cal F. I have a Cal B. I have a Cal R. And now I need a Cal L. Okay, so we will turn left. Copy. We'll come down here. And the reason we're copying and pasting because these should already have our highs and lows right. So it makes it a little faster. Cal L. All right. And no parameter in there. Okay. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate my forward motion. And so up here then in the void loop, I want to know. Very simply, I want to know how far will the car go in five seconds. So what I would just do is I would call Cal F like that. All right. And then I'm going to measure how far it went. OK. Does this make sense what we're doing? I hope so, because I really want you to think like an engineer. That's what I want you to do. OK. We're going to be good boys and girls and turn this off. We're going to plug this baby in. Okay, and now are going to download this program. What? What? Ah, man. 
were you guys screaming at me? I wasn't putting my colon in. Ah, I think maybe I just missed it in that one spot, but it does look like I'm missing my curly bracket on cal left. So I better put that cur that end curly in. Looks like I got the other end curlies in. Okay, let's try this now. What? Oh, D was not declared. All right, where did, oh, okay, yeah, this cal left was supposed to be 5,000 because I'm not passing it D. I'm just doing all these things at five seconds, right? Okay, now let's download that. Looks like it's going to be happy this time. I'm going to pick it up and just make sure it should just go forward and then it should stop and then it should stop forever. And so the first time that I run this, I never know whether it's actually going to run or not. It looks like it's not going to run this time. Okay, but let's make sure that it's working. So I'm going to hit the reset and it should go. Okay, for five seconds. And then I'll see how far did it go. Okay, now we need to go to a clear spot so that we can let this thing go. It'll probably go about 10 feet. I don't know. I guess about 10 feet. I'm just completely guessing. And so I need to step away, but I'm going to let you watch because we have the all new, the fabulous, the robot camera. Yes, we have the robot camera. So I'm going to go. And then I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it down and then I'm going to hit the button and then I'm going to measure how far it goes. Now, I don't have a tape measure because I think like an engineer. I know that the floor tiles are exactly one foot. So I can just count, I can just count the floor tiles and then I can just measure the last few inches. Okay, so you guys can watch. I'll try to keep talking, but you might not hear me very well because I'm going to be a little bit away from the microphone. So let me see here. I think you're ready for me to go do this. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay, we are on. We are at the starting line. Back wheels at the starting line. I will hit reset. Bam. Okay, and the good news is it didn't run into anything. Did you guys see it? Okay, so this is going to be one foot, two foot, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, twelve and three inches. Okay, it went twelve foot three inches. I am going to turn it off and I am going to switch our view back over here. And remember that 12 foot 3 inches. And I really got this messed up. I'm sorry guys, I got to get this. My tablet got messed up. Okay. And now, let me see if I close this thing and open it again. I'm sorry for that. And let me open up my scratch pad again. Okay, there it is. Everything where it needs to be. You can see it good. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to come over here like this. And so what did we say? And let's make sure this is going to work right. I got one more little adjustment here to do. Okay, and we are on this layer. Okay, so now I think we have everything working, 
And so what did we say D was equal to? I'm going to get a smaller pen. D is equal to 12 foot 3 inches. And so I need to know, I need to work in fractions. And so what I need to see is 3 is what fraction of a foot. So that would be 3 divided by 12 is 0.25. And so the distance was equal to 12 point two five feet. Now what else do we know? We know that distance is equal to rate times time. Okay, and so the distance is equal to rate times time. And then what I want is though, I want to calculate the rate. So I divide both sides by t, d over t, is r over t divided by t, right? Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other side of the equation. t over t cancel, right? No! There's no such thing in math as canceling. The way you guys have to look at this is d over t is equal to r times t over t, right? That t over t, and t over t is what? 1. So then what do I end up with? d over t is equal to r. And what that means then is r is equal to d divided by t. Now what I want is the rate. That's why I did the whole experiment. Well, the, the rate would be distance. How far did I go? 12.25. And how, far, how long did it take? It took 5 seconds. So the rate is equal to 12.25 divided by 5. 12.25 divided by 5. The rate is 2.45. The rate is 2.45. And then what are the units? Feet per second. Okay. And so this is very important. This is very important. This is our rate. Okay. Now, the thing was, was that what we have, though, is we have a desired distance that we want to go. Okay. And so when we are going to go a certain distance, to calculate that distance, we have to figure out what time will give us that distance. And so what we know is, we know, again, that distance is equal to rate times time, but now I've got to calculate the time. So what do I do? I say distance is equal to rate times time, and I'm going to divide both sides. I want to isolate time, so I'm going to divide both sides by r. d over r is equal to r t over r. r over r cancel. No, r over r makes 1. So what I end up with is t is equal to the distance that you want to go divided by the rate, and I know what the rate is. So I, to calculate the time, I calculate the time to leave the motors on, and that is the distance that I want to go divided by the rate, which was 2.45. Okay? This is very important. Okay, this is very important. So. I know that I want to go 5 feet. How long do I leave the motors on? 5 divided by 2.45. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's come over here back to our code. And hopefully I can get back to the code without as much trouble as I had getting over here. And again, with six monitors, I have lost my screen. Let's see. All right. Now... Remember, we want to pass these functions distances. And so if I'm going to use distance, I better come up here and I better declare it. And it's a float. Okay, why is it a float? Because I might not want to go around number of feet. So distance is a float. And now what I can just come down here is I'm not going to calibrate F. What I'm going to do is I am just going to say the distance that I want to go is equal to, let's, 
let's be bold and say 14 feet. Okay, the distance I want to go is 14 feet. And then what do I call? Well, I call forward, forward, but I have to tell it how far I want to go. I want to go D, which is going to be 14. All right. And then after I go, you better believe that I'm going to want to stop. And so what I do is I do a while 1 equal 1, and it just doesn't repeat after it does it one time. It gets stuck here, so it doesn't keep going 14 feet and crash into the wall. All right. And then remember that on our void forward, after we go the desired amount, then we, uh, after we go the desired amount, then we stop. But now we got to put the equation in. I almost forgot to do that. All right. So how long do we delay? Delay is a time. Okay. Delay is a time, which is D divided by 2.45. Okay. D is 2 divided by uh, D, T is D divided by 2.45. And so let's come back over here. And then what we're going to do is it is going to be T is going to be, and I'm going to do it here. Okay. T is equal to D divided by 2.45. All right. We just declared a new variable and so we I mean we just used a new variable so we better declare it up here and so we're gonna since it's part of this function we're gonna declare it in the function so we're going to say t we're gonna say float the variable t okay and then uh, we better go ahead and yeah we, we need to pass an integer to these functions and so then what we're gonna pass this is uh, we better multiply by a thousand. Why do we multiply by a thousand? Because our calculations were in seconds. All of our calculations, the units we were operating in were seconds. And the delay function wants milliseconds. Well, how many milliseconds in a second? A thousand. So if I have 1,000, if I have one second, I want 1,000 milliseconds. So I need to multiply by a thousand. And then I just put in T, okay, like that. Now, I think that I think that should work, but if it doesn't, we might need to make t an int. Okay, so we are going to plug this thing in again. Let me see if I can give you a cool view of this. We'll come back over here and you can see it. Okay, so we are going to turn the motor off. Ah, I turned it on. That's why I hold it when I'm fooling with it, because you don't want this thing to drive off on you. Okay, it is indeed off. And now, what would we expect? If we're going to go 14 feet, we would expect it to be on for about 5 seconds. And so let's go ahead and download this. What is this nonsense? Oh. When I calculated T, I didn't put my colon. Guys, on that Jetson Nano artificial intelligence class, I've been programming in Python for like the last eight months. And you don't use colons in Python. So I'm having to get back into my Arduino game here. All right, let's try this. That looks good. We'll give it a second. Now I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so that was just probably finishing up the last uh, the last of the program. So now for it to really go, I'm going to hit reset. That sounds pretty good. That's how far it thinks it needs to go 14 feet. So you see if this works, all you got to do is tell it, I want to go 14, and you let it do all the thinking because we calibrate once. We do the hard work one time, and then it should work after that. So I've got this program for 14 feet. So we're going to go back over to our most excellent robot cam, and we're going to see what this baby does. OK, we are on the starting line. We are on the starting line. And then when I hit reset, the thing should go for a target of 14 feet. Let's see what happens. I hope it's going straight. 
Ready, set, go. Look at it go. Don't crash. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen feet on the nose, man. It is exactly fourteen feet. Boom! I'm telling you, it. <laughs> I am telling you, it was 14 feet to the inch. Why? Because we think like engineers. We don't do things by trial and error. We calibrate things. Okay, we calibrate things. Well, let's just do a calibration really quickly on backwards. I really expect backwards to be the same as forward. But let's do a cal back. Okay, and cal backwards, I think... Didn't we on the cal forward, cal backwards? We already have it there at 5,000. Okay, so we're just going to come up here and we are just going to call cal B. All right. And then what I will do is I am going to uh, just start in the same place, but just turn it the other way. Okay, I'm going to start in the same place, but just turn it the other way. We would kind of expect it to be the same, right? We would kind of expect it to be the same, but we are going to need to plug it in. And I was talking about something that you couldn't see there. We'll just run it back. You know, we'll just point it the other way. Okay, and now we're going to try to download. We are going to turn it off. <laughs> Always hold it. I can't tell you how easy it is to drive this thing off your workbench. Okay. What is this nonsense? Ah, I told you I've been programming in Python too long. All right. I wish Python would just let you end in a color. What is that? I uh, call, oh, Cal B1, 1L. Did you guys catch that? All right. Third time is a charm. Okay, it's going to be happy this time. Looking good, looking good. Okay. Let's unplug it. Let's just give it a little dry run here, right? By dry run, I just mean see if it seems kind of right. It should be on for like five seconds. Okay. And then that's, okay, now I'm going to hit the reset. Okay. And then 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. So that's that's roughly right. Okay. So this time we've just got to make sure that we do it pointing backwards. The most excellent robot cam is in action. Okay. This time we are going to put it facing the other way because we're anticipating that it's going to run backwards. So let's go. Hold your breath. And they're off to the races. Okay, here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve foot. It went twelve feet and three inches. Twelve feet and three inches. And let's come back over here. So as we expected, backwards really was exactly the same as forward. You expect that, but as engineers, we what? We never assume anything. Because when you assume A-S-S-U-M-E, when you assume, you make an ass out of me and you. So never assume as an engineer. Always verify, okay? But now that we see that, we don't have to do this calculation again. We can just go back to our code, go back to our code, and then we can fix that backwards where all of this would be the same, right? The T is going to be D divided by 2.45 times 1,000, and then we delay by that. And so on backwards, we're just going to put that in there. Did I... Uh, let's see. Edit, paste. That was a big mess. What on earth did I do? I better undo. Okay. This is what we need. We need these three lines of code. 
right mouse click copy. We're going to come down to backwards and we're going to replace those two lines with those three lines. And then we are going to need to still float the T because even though we declare T here, it's a local variable. The only thing that knows about T is the function that it's in. And so we've got to create one in this function as well. And so we will just create a float T here as well. Okay, so now we have forwards and backwards. I'm confident enough at this point, I'm not going to go check backwards because I want to get to the turn right. All right, so I want to calibrate the turn right now. And so if we look at this in the, in the uh, calibrate F, calibrate B, we've done that. I'm going to calibrate right, and it's going to spin for five seconds. Okay, and so I'm going to calibrate right. Okay, now what we can see here is we can hop on over here, and what, what we can see is, is that uh, we're going to do the cal right here, the cal right, and what do I know? I know distance is equal to rate times time, okay, but we're not going, we are not going straight, we're going an angle, okay, and in that case, angle that we go, the angle that we go is equal to how fast we're spinning omega. That is the number of degrees per second that we're going. It's kind of like speed, only it's the speed of the rotation. The angle that you turn to is your speed of rotation times time. So like think of it this way. If I'm going five degrees a second for three seconds, I went 15 degrees. So this is the degrees, the degrees per second, and the time. Now what is it that I want? I want to figure out what omega is. Omega is going to be equal to how far of an angle we went through over what time. And we already know what the time is because we just said it. Omega is equal to theta divided by 5. Why 5? Because that's how long it's going to go, right? That is how long it's going to go because we said to turn right 4 under Cal R. It goes for 5,000 milliseconds, which is 5 seconds. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out what that angle is that it goes in in five seconds. So we will need to, we downloaded that, I do believe. Did we download that? Uh, I don't think we did. So we're just going to be safe and we are going to download that thing. Come back over here. I might have downloaded it, but I don't want to take a chance. Okay, so we do now up here, what are we doing? We're doing a Cal R. We're going to download it. And I left the motor on, which is like a terrible thing. Okay, it is a terrible thing to leave that motor on. So now it is downloaded. Okay, I'll turn the motor on, but I always ignore the first one. I ignore the first one. Okay, I ignore the first one. <clears throat> okay, now what I'm going to do is, this thing's going to be spinning, and you've got to count how many times it spins around. And so I'm going to put a little piece of tape on the back because that's something that helps me keep frontwards and backwards apart. And then let's see if I can give you a view. Okay, I want to see if I can give you a view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up exactly along the line in the floor. Right, I'm lining it up exactly along the line in the floor. And so with that tape, pointed back towards me that is zero degrees and now I've got to count how many times this thing goes around. All right so now I'm going to hit the reset button and count with me. One, two, three, four, five. Okay it went five full times and so we better capture that. It went five full times 
Okay, so it went over here. It went five revolutions. Okay, I, that's the part I've got to remember there, five revolutions, so I wrote it down. But it went more than five revolutions, so let's go back and look at it. Okay, and let's see if I can give you a better view. And what you can see is it went five, five. it started with the blue tape on this side. So it went five revolutions plus 90 degrees plus another 90. It went 180 and then about 10 more degrees. So it went 190 degrees past five revolutions. Does that make sense? Because it was like this. It went around five times plus a little more than 180, which would be 190. So let's come back over here. So it went five revolutions plus 190 degrees. Now, what is the problem? The problem is, is that we're not dealing in revolutions. We're dealing in degrees. How many degrees are there in a revolution? 360. So I have, uh, let me come down. Uh, let me, I'm going to, yeah, let me see. I think I'll start over here. All right. I'll go to a different color so it'll keep it easy. Okay. So I have five revolutions. But I don't want to be in revolutions. I want to be in degrees. Well, what do I know? I know that 360 degrees is the same as one revolution. Okay, so I have revolutions over revolutions. Revolutions over revolutions make one, so that unit goes away. And so I'm left with 5 times 360 is equal to 5 times 360 is equal to 1,800. 1,800. And then what is my unit? I am left with degrees. So 1,800 degrees. But what's my problem? I also had 190 degrees more. So the total theta that I went through was the 1,800, which was the five times around, right? Five times 360 for each one and then plus 190. So the total theta that I went through was equal to 1,990. That's how far I went. But I don't want to know how far I went. I want to know what my omega was. Well, my omega is how far you went divided by 5. Why 5 was the 5 seconds. So I'm going to take 1,990 and divide by 5. And now my omega is 1990 divided by 5 is going to be 398. And no, I am not going to round to 400. Omega is equal to 398, and that is degrees, because the 1990 was in degrees per second, because the 5 was in seconds. Okay, and I'm sorry, for a brief moment you couldn't see that's degrees per second. All right, so now I can put, I will get a little further out of your way. Okay, so then we will just write this to make sure. De omega is equal to 398 degrees per second. All right, so now let's come back to our code view. Okay, and now we're going to come down and work on our turn right. Okay, we're going to work on our turn right. And what we are going to do is... This time we're going to pass it degrees, D-E-G, for degrees, okay? And that, 
I'm going to go ahead and make that an int just because a degree is so small you're not going to worry about a fraction of a degree and then up here I'm going to be passing it a degree and so I'm going to say int and I'll just call this degrees you don't have to pass it you don't have to call it the same thing but that's a special word word I'll just say degree rotate like that and now what I will do is I will set degree rotate is equal to 90 so that would be to rotate 90 degrees and then what would I do I would uh, that was I don't remember what I call these things what did I call that turn right so now I'm going to say turn right how far do I want to turn right degree rotate and right 90 degrees would be like you would do a hard turn like what you do at a stop sign you stop and then you turn right okay so the degree rotation I'm going to set to 90 but the nice thing is now we can set it to anything we want to if we come down and we work on that function a little bit where under turn right now again we're going to have to uh, create a variable and we've got degrees but what we need is omega I'll just call it W so I'm just going to say and uh, Omega does need to be a float so I'm going to say float uh, W uh, because that looks like the Omega now why does that need to be because there's a big difference between I mean you know a, a degree a second versus 1.5 degrees a second it could really matter so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and float this and then down here what we are trying to calculate though is we are trying to calculate the time okay and what the time would be is since uh, this theta is omega over t the time that we're looking for the time is going to be equal to divide both sides by omega it's going to be the angle that you want divided by the omega and so the time is going to be the angle that you want divided by what is omega 398. So time is theta divided by 398. Okay, so let's come back over here. You guys need to really understand this math that I'm talking about. I'm trying to explain it, but don't just ignore me. It's really important. Okay, theta divided by 398. Okay, so what was it that we passed it? It's degrees, and so we want to go, we want to say that time is equal to degrees that we passed it. That's what we wanted divided by 398, because that's what we just calculated. And then we're going to go here, delay, and then we need to multiply by 1,000 because we are in seconds and delay wants milliseconds and then we're just going to do a delay t here and then we're, we also need to just go ahead and float t so that you know it recognizes that variable okay so that would be degree 398 a thousand that looks good all right, so now what we can do is <clears throat> let's just see if we can change direction. Like if I'm going this direction and I want to go the other direction, what would I need to rotate by? I would need to rotate by 180 degrees. So let's just try that. Let's say that because that's what you needed to do on the homework, right? Uh, you want a degree rotate 180, okay? and then turn right how far degree rotation okay and then let's plug this thing in oh my goodness I didn't give you the I, I didn't give you the good view here and I can bring this back over here like this okay I think you can see that all right I always feel bad when I'm talking about something and I don't have that uh, that up there for you that is kinda bad so now we're going to come here, and I think we're ready to download. 
oops, and I, ooh, I had this thing on. It was fixing to take off on us. Okay, I will turn it on now. And what we should see is the motors running one way and then the other, and hopefully it'll be a right turn. And, okay, I will hit the reset. And still nothing. What did we do wrong here? Degree rotate is 180. We pass it degree rotate, and we go to turn right. We come down to turn right, and we pass it degrees. And then float W, float T, and then T is degrees, which we should have had, divided by 398 times 1,000, delay, delay T, and we go high, low, high, low. This is quite perplexing. So let's just uh, let's just let's just make this thing work. So I'm going to comment these two things out, comment that out, and that is not a comment. That is a Python comment. Let me comment that out, and then let me do a delay of one thousand. Let's make sure that we've got our enable A and our enable B up here. Yeah, those things are enabled. And so this is just going to be a hard right turn of 1,000. So this, this, should, this should work because there's no calculations involved. And of course, I forgot my semicolon. All right, let's try this. <clears throat> what is it not like now? Okay. Okay, so that one worked, right? So that one was a second. So then I'm passing it degrees, and I'm passing it degree rotation, turn right degree rotation. That 180 should come down here. And so let me print T this time just to make sure what t is. So we are going to say uh, serial.println print print and we're going to print t and then we are going to have to turn our serial monitor on in our void setup as serial.begin9600 like that. All right, so let's do this. And this time we should see what that T is and see why it doesn't like it. And let's go ahead and turn it back on. Uh, where was that? Turn right. Degree divided by 398. And we are, we're not going to delay by this one. We are just going to delay by T. And let's see if this works. First of all, we'll see if it downloads. What is this nonsense? Oh, didn't put the semicolon. Okay, let's see. And I'll open up my serial monitor. Okay, make sure that I'm on 9600. Ooh, I'm not on 9600. Okay, so it's calculating T to be zero. And why is it calculating T to be zero? I've got degrees. T is degrees, which I pass in. Divide by 398, which is omega, times 1,000. Well, let's just print 
degrees and see if that's where the problem is. EG. You see, let's see, are we getting the degrees down into this function? This is kind of strange, isn't it? Didn't we pass D up above? I wonder why it doesn't like it this time. Maybe you guys see my mistake. Where is my serial monitor? There it is. Okay. So it's got that. It's got 180. It's got that. So it knows what D is. You know what? I think I might have a integer math problem here. And so I divided by 398, and that is an integer, and that might be making it do integer math, and it might be rounding it to zero. And so let's try this. I think that's probably it. I can't tell you how many times I see this as a problem. Uh, when you're doing, yeah, okay, now it is working, I do believe. So what are we telling it? We're telling it that we want the car to rotate by... 180 degrees. Now I've already downloaded the program and so I will just switch your view over like this and hopefully you will be able to see the car. So now I'm lining it up exactly with the uh, line in the floor tile. Uh, you might be able to see it if I put it here better. Okay. Yeah, you can hopefully see that line, although it's not perfectly clear to you that it is straight along that line. So what we expect is that blue tape to just go exactly to the opposite. Okay, that is pretty darn close, but not quite. Not quite. So let's see, it needs, its rotational rate was a little bit lower than that. And so the 398, let's make it 380. So you see, we're just kind of trying to fine tune it here a little bit. And the other thing that could be happening is the tires could be slipping a little bit. I will need to plug it in in order to download it. That is something then that is going to be an issue that if these tires, they, they pop on so quickly, if they slip a bit, little bit when they're starting, that could be an issue. So let me... Uh, okay, so now I'll unplug it. I'll come here. Okay, that actually was a lot closer. That was a lot closer. So I think that that 380 is going to work better. It still did not go all the way. So let's say, let's make it 360. So you guys might think this looks like trial and error, but this is, we did a calibration using math, and, and now what we are doing is we are tweaking our calibration parameter. And I think what is going on is if the tires slip a little bit when they start or when they stop, if we get a little bit of tire slippage, what is going to happen is that's going to affect our calibration. And I think it would probably work better outside on the carpet. But let me take this and let me see see if this works or did I make a mistake in my math that would be the other thing let me check my math and make sure it was five times around which was times 360 and then it was a little bit more plus 190 because it made it a little bit more than one so that is 1990 and then that was in five seconds, so I have 1990 divided by five. 
okay 398 yeah but if the slippage is at the start then it's going to affect these smaller ones more so uh, let's try this so what did we do we change it or we were going to do a 90 right so we're going to try doing a 90 degrees here Okay, so got that. Let's unplug it. Put it down here. Make sure that you can see it. Okay, hit the reset. Oh, that's perfect. Did a perfect 90. Okay, so we're tweaking our parameters a little bit. And what we're going to do is you guys can go in and calibrate on the left, but I'm going to go ahead and just make it the same as the right. Uh, so we're going to come here and this is the backwards. This is the turn right. Uh, so the turn left is going to be exactly this same thing. I'll get these four lines of code here. Edit copy and also we didn't use W because we just put it in as a constant the 360 so we didn't use that but now on turn left we will come here and paste over those those four lines of code that looks good all right and then uh, stop is still stop and then we have the turn right is calibrated we have the backwards we have the we have everything calibrated now man this is a lot of progress guys you guys are doing great okay so now what we need to do is on the turn left we still have to tell it that there's this uh, variable t and so we're going to float t just so that this function has a t to operate with all right, so that should be ready to go. So let's see what we could do now. What was, <laughs> let's see what the homework was. I do believe that the homework was to go 10 feet. And so we're going to come up, we have a, we have a float D and we have a degree rotation. Okay, so let's, uh, let's come down here and let's say that what we want to do is we want to go forward. How far? 10 feet okay and then we want to turn right is that how we did that I never remember this I should write this down turn right yeah okay we want to turn right 180 degrees so that would be coming back okay and then let's say we want to then go forward 10 feet okay and then I'm going to do a turn left 180, so it'll be starting, you know, it, 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 it'll be turning back like what it started, okay? Now, let's see if we can download this. Man, this is fun. Are you guys having as much fun with this as I am? Stop running those canned programs, man. You can run your own, you can write your own code here. Think like an engineer, act like an engineer. Okay. Oh, what is this nonsense? Up ah, my turn left. I forgot my colon. Okay. Here we go. What? Uh, turn left, okay, is degrees. Okay, I said D. I said D up here instead of degrees. All right, let's try that. Looks happy. We'll let it run its course, then we'll put it out there and, and start it. Okay, so let's see here. This could be interesting. Uh, guys, I feel pretty confident. The thing I worry a little bit about is I worry a little bit about the tire slippage. Because if it doesn't do a clean 180 and comes back 10 feet, it could get off course and it could crash. Yeah, this is getting like NASCAR. 
we could have a crash. All right, let's go to the most excellent robot cam. All right, the most excellent robot cam. So we will say, gentlemen, start your engines. Ready, set, go. And it's off. It's off to the races. And it's coming back. Okay, that's pretty darn good. That is pretty good, darn good. Now you see that it's about a foot off from where it started, so in 10 feet coming back, it didn't come back to the exact same position. It got the distance exactly right. The distance is exactly right. But what is not good is that it didn't come exactly back, which means it didn't make, if it did a right turn for 180 degrees, it didn't quite go like it should. It went a little bit less. So still, we need to drop that omega term a little bit. Let's try it again. Okay, it's consistent, but you can see that uh, you can see that our calibration is off a little bit. Okay, the calibration is off a little bit, and so what you need to do is, and this will be your homework assignment, is to go in and play with your calibration factor a little bit, to play with that calibration factor a little bit, and uh, you know where I'd said the omega was 398 and I took it down to 360, well, it's still, it's still lower than that. And so what you need to do is you need to tweak this until uh, you get it where it's doing what you want. But do you see the cool thing here? Now to get this robot, first of all, we're not using anybody's library. Look up here. There's no libraries being loaded. You are writing this code from scratch. That's acting like an engineer. That's thinking like an engineer. Man, don't run those pre-canned routines. Learn how to program this thing yourself. And now what you need to do is you need to go in and you need to get all four of those things, uh, what would I say, calibrated accurately. Like really now with this, you ought to be able to go out and come back and land within a few inches of where you started. Okay, tweak those parameters until this thing is doing exactly what you want it. Now to write a program, you just sit and a three-year-old could write the program. How far forward do you want to go? How far do you want to turn? You know, where do you want to go and how much? And then it will do what you want it to do. Man, five lessons. We've made a lot of progress here. I think that this is just super, super cool. And we've got this thing with some functionality now that makes it pretty... Uh, pretty fun. Like right now already you could go out and you could program in a course and then you could have the thing run through the course. Okay. So that is just pretty darn neat. All right guys, I am having a lot of fun with this. I hope you are having as much fun doing these lessons as I am making uh, these lessons. I just really, the, the, uh, Arduino lessons were fun, but we were just working with individual components. We have those components now coming together and working as a team, and that's where things get really exciting. So hope you hope you guys will do the homework. Hope you guys will tune in next week. This is Paul Mo Quarter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.